is up H Town. This is Ace John Wheelhouse with Locked On Astros, and I just got to witness the Houston Astros winning their second World Series title in person. It was pandemonium. I'm going to talk about my live reaction. I'm talking going to talk about the experience I had with my son. I'm um, seeing friends before, during the game, and after the game. The craziness outside the stadium. We're going to talk about Kyle Schwarber bunting on a second strike. We're going to talk about Jeremy Pena needs to be extended like yesterday. We're also going to talk about why this team is a true, legit dynasty. We've got this and so much more. And our my live reaction to the third out, the final out, to clinch the second World Series title in Houston Astros history. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked on Houston Astros, and we're your daily Astros podcast. This is H-Town Wheelhouse, and you can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Strohs. You can find the show at Locked on Astros on, at, um, on Facebook, Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on TikTok. You can find Eric. Eric and I will be back together tomorrow. Eric gave a live reaction I was at the game. I was literally in gridlock. I think I sat in one place over on Emanuel Street for probably 45 minutes. But nonetheless, I made it home because I wanted to talk to you guys. And I got to meet a lot of really cool people tonight. Um, let me just start off by saying thank you so much for this season. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. That's where you can get all your sports betting needs. And I mean, golly, did you see what Mattress Mac just did? He opened up a briefcase with seventy-five million dollars. And um, you know, I, I just, I just really think that what we saw tonight and what is happening before our very eyes is now we can start talking about a dynasty. And I know the players don't want to talk about it. I know the players don't care about that stuff. But this team is an absolute force to be reckoned with. Thank you. I see a Phillies fan in here saying congratulations to Dusty and the Astros. Houston, the most dominant team of this era. And, I mean, it's hard to argue. Look at this. I got the shirt. I got the original Apollo shirt, H-Town versus everyone. Shout out to Apollo Dez, my guys at the Summit Podcast, and those guys that are rocking it there. Um, you know, I, I want to send a shout out to the rest of our um, MLB network um, here in here in the Locked On Network. David Locke, Jeff Carr, just some major players in our company that support us every day. Uh, just golly, I, I just I can't I can't believe this. I mean, where do I start? Let me let me just start with my reaction um, to what happened. My son and I went. And if you're listening to this, you'll have to go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to us, and check this out. Um, here is a picture of my son and I at the game. Um, that's us, you know, right after they won the World Series. Here is the emblem on the big board, El Grande, as they call it, in Houston. And then there's just a picture of the team and the stage getting rolled out for on the field. I just, uh, wow, like... I shed a few tears tonight. I definitely, definitely cried. Um, not only to experience in person, but I was at the I was at the game when our Pujols, when we were two batters in front of our Pujols to clinch our first World Series, like qualifying for the World Series, winning the NLCS, and I was there when we lost it. And my son and I, we actually they haven't lost a playoff game that we've attended together. Now, whether in the grand scheme of things, that's actually a thing. I would like to think it is. Um, but without further ado, I want to show you my live reaction to um, to the final out of the game. Here it is.
Wow. Like getting to experience that with, with, with your son, getting to experience that firsthand it is just absolutely amazing. Um, I want to thank Tim. Um, I actually got my tickets from Tim and Tim is a faithful listener to our show. Um, Tim actually lives and works in Bryan College Station. He's a season ticket holder. And um, that's really cool. Chris Castellani just sent me a DM saying, congratulations, buddy boy. Um, go nuts. Yes, I'm going to definitely have to talk to Chris. We're going to definitely have to do a space as soon with him. But Tim, thank you so much for allowing my son and I to attend the ALDS, the ALCS, in the world series. I, I just, it's amazing. Um, this, this man, um, spared no expense, giving me the tickets. Um, you know, not going to give y'all financial details, but it was definitely within my budget. And so I tip my cap to you. Um, wow. I, I just, I just really, really am so freaking just overwhelmed. <laughs> Jordan Alvarez, right? I mean, that ball, just kept climbing and you know whenever whenever they change pitchers okay and Jordan Alvarez comes up to bat in that moment that was one of those moments where a couple innings before that you're like something's got to give something's got to happen to where they give up something big or or someone's going to give up something big and Alvarado I believe he gave up two runs in Philly when the Astros scored the five runs and beat them um, in Philadelphia in game, uh, gosh, I'm losing track, five, four or five. Like, like honestly, I can't even think. I'm so tired right now. I'm so wiped out. But I just, what this team has accomplished, guys, Martin Maldonado was playing with the broken hand, and I'm sure Eric covered that. We found out later that Alex Bregman – um, has a fractured finger from the slide. But Framber, okay, Jeremy Pena wins MVP. Let's start there. Jeremy Pena. Jeremy Pena won the ALCS MVP. Jeremy Pena then won the gold glove. Then Jeremy Pena, he freaking won the World Series MVP. And he's the first rookie to hit a home run in a World Series game. This is an outstanding kid. And a friend of mine and I were discussing um, I'll just call him Dave. I don't know if he wants me to reveal his full name, but he said, you know what? We really should extend Pena to 2027. I mean, he's 25. He's the same age as Jordan Alvarez. Why not sign him now? Why not sign him now? Why not bring back Verlander? Why not bring, just go ahead and bring back, you know, Michael Brantley too. But Jeremy Pena, this kid is a superstar. He's got that clutch gene. He doesn't take he doesn't like take the credit and say it's all about me. He said in that World Series post game interview, he said it was about the preparation that the guys around me did to help me get ready. I mean, you just um, I says you don't extend Pena until arbitration, okay? Well, but my point is, as soon as you're able to extend this kid, freaking extend him, okay? That's the bottom line. That's my point. Framber will get paid. OK, um, Javier, these guys will get paid. Um, Tucker, I think, is probably the next in line, but I'm not going to get into all that stuff. Guys, we, we can talk details on Sunday. I want to focus on this game. Um, what was up with Kyle Schwarber bunting with two strikes? I mean, if I've ever seen a player sail it in, it would have to be Kyle Schwarber bunting with two strikes. Like, this guy came up earlier and hit an absolute laser to right field. Completely killed the crowd. I mean, Phillies fans got bold. And it's like, this is a team that talked about how they were going to come back and they had fight and all this stuff. But he bunted on a third on, with two strikes. Just absolutely unreal. How are the bots getting in here? What the hell? Good God. Sorry, the bots are coming in already. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Schwarberger, more like Schwarbummer. 
okay? But this team gets to Seattle, and then they hear the chants, we want Houston from New York. Then they bowl through New York. I mean, they just mow them down, four-game sweep. And then Phillies fans, we want Houston. The entire crowd was chanting, we want Houston. The Chaz Chomp was alive and real tonight. I actually, you'll have to go to YouTube and check out the short um, interviews I did. I met some really cool Phillies fans that were down from Philly. You know, they were holding on to hope. They thought at the beginning of the game, before the game started, they were going to take it to game seven. Um, but it was great meeting them. Um, I'm at, I met the creator of the Chaz Chomp, him and his son. I interviewed both of them. That was a phenomenal thing. The guy's name is Scott. He's actually a teacher. He teaches at a at a um, local local junior high, and him and his son were both dressed up like alligators. It was great. And I don't know if y'all remember this, but I said the X factor for these playoffs is Dusty Baker. And I know at times Dusty Baker makes moves that we scratch our head, but Dusty Baker trusted three people. In the back end. Now we didn't see we didn't see Montero tonight, okay? But we did see Hector Neres, we did see Brian Abreu, and then we saw Presley. And um, I'll have to put that up. Presley coming out on the mound, the way they got the LEDs flashing and everything, and everybody's got their cell phones waving around. It was amazing. Um, yeah, you know, hey, um, Mr. Corona keeps mentioning um, Weston. Weston Kaliski. Um, basically, Weston is a great kid. Weston has his own YouTube channel. Weston um, does, you know, he talks about the Astros every day. Um, he's the only other podcast that I know that's pretty much a daily podcast like ours. And he finally hit a thousand subscribers. Good for him. And, you know, we're all better together. We're better, stronger as a family and as a team. Um, before the game, Mattress Mac was walking around the stadium, couldn't step one foot without getting a picture. He actually had a security detail with him tonight. And that makes me think of BetOnline. BetOnline BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there, the fastest and easiest way to check out all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. So this game tonight, just a few notes. Framer Valdez got Bryce Harper swinging. Harper is in the World Series 4 for 18. And... um. He, he was basically 4-for-18 four four in the World Series. But this home run that Kyle Schwarber hit was the first home run Framber had given up since July 3rd. And he had only allowed one home run to a left-hander during the regular season. So Schwarber saw that pitch, and he just mashed it. Jordan Alvarez's pitch that he saw was right down the middle of the plate, and it was unbelievable. Trey Mancini got off the schneid. And I don't know if y'all saw this, but Trey Mancini actually apologized for not being a productive bat. And this guy gets up, and he finally gets a single, and everybody was cheering for him. That's what I love about this team, okay? Um, Basically, at four and a half innings, this is the furthest in the World Series that a game has gone without a run being scored. So they had always scored something in the first, second, or third inning until this game. Jeremy Pena is the first World Series rookie who get who gets hits in his first six games um, in a World Series. And Framber Valdez is a second left-handed pitcher to have five consecutive strikeouts in a World Series. The only other one is Sandy Koufax. But Jordan's bomb. 450 feet over the batter's eye. It was his first home run since the ALDS. And when I told my son that, because my son pays attention, but you know, he's 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 a teenager, and so he 
has other interests. He's really interested in basketball. So he doesn't follow baseball as closely as I do. He was like, Dad, there's no way his last home run was ALDS game two because him and I were at that game together. I said, no, that's literally the last time he hit a home run. And he, <laughs> Brendan says, I blacked out when he hit that home run. I think we all did. <laughs> but it hit it over the batter's eye into that Budweiser porch. And those are expensive seats. Holy crap. During the playoffs, they were going for three or four grand. So whoever got that ball, bro, that ball's worth some money. You better get that authenticated. I hope it didn't leave the stadium without the Astros putting a sticker on it. That was unreal. Mancini came up big defensively today. Actually, in game five, but today he, dude, that guy had to stretch. They weren't giving him super great throws. Those throws weren't really crisp. He had to reach. And so you love this total team effort. I mean, Framber Valdez, six innings, nine strikeouts, one run. Nary's two strikeouts. And let's talk about Nary's. Hector Nary's is nasty. Like, you, you know how uh, Lance McCullers walked off the mound and he was like, that's, I'm effing nastier. That's, you know, and that was like a shirt. Dude, that's Hector Nary's. That dude, when he gets a strikeout, he, good Lord, I want that kind of motor. I mean, I think I can replicate that a little bit, but not on that level. Man, what, geez, his third hold, Brian and Bray, you got his fifth hold. They both had three strikeouts, and Presley didn't even need a strikeout. He's, you know, popped him out. <laughs> I just, I, like, I still can't believe it. Like, I was there. I was there when they clinched their first World Series title, I've always been, I've always felt like I've missed out. I've always felt like I've missed out because of the Albert Pujols game. And since my son and I have been attending playoff games again, even in 2015 when they played the Royals, the game we went to, they won. They were so close, so close to going to the LCS that year. But regardless of that, the Houston Astros are your 2022 World Series champions. And I'm just going to say this, um, because there's been a lot of things brewing. I got this little, let me show you, I got my World Series program. Um, and I got on, I got online and I ordered hoodie, shirt, and hat. But I ordered hoodies for the whole family. Um, because they were nice. They were only $79. You know, it's weird. They were selling World Series hoodies in the gift shop for 100 bucks a pop. Sorry, I ain't buying that. Um, <laughs> sodas were up 3 bucks. They were like up to $11. Um, so Vicky says she went to game one, two, and six. That's awesome. Um, yeah, you know, your, you know, John Boy is speechless. Look, 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 look. Real talk here, okay? Real talk. There's not a dang thing that anybody can say about this team. There's not a dang thing that anybody can say about how this team was built, about what this team went through, about the hellfire and brimstone that they've taken. And, you know, there were some Phillies fans next to me. And when Altuve got out, they stood up and they started yelling, cheater, cheater. And then... Get this. Now, this isn't all Phillies fans. These are these three jamokes, okay? These three just whack jobs. They were yelling cheater. And then when they honored the military like they normally do, and everybody stands up and claps for these 95-year-old World War II veterans, these freaking morons sat there and didn't even stand up. And I got on to him. I said, hold on, you're going to yell cheater at Jose Altuve, who didn't use the, who didn't use the system or whatever, but you're not going to stand up for our veterans? Bunch of bums. Now, all the other Phillies fans I interacted with were phenomenal. They were great. They were welcoming. They were high-fiving me. We were talking. Just go watch the short videos that I put up. But most of the Philly fans were really good. It was just these three guys next to me in section like 418 that just, they rubbed me the wrong way, man. I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But I tell you right now, I am so proud of this team. This team's a dynasty. This team has been to four World Series in six years. 
They've won two of those World Series. God, like, it's their second World Series. It's not their first. It's their second. Their second World Series. And this is a dynasty. And Framber Valdez is going to be here for a while. And Christian Javier is going to be here for a long time. And so is Luis Garcia and Jose Arquiti. And Justin Verlander is probably going to get... I, I just don't see Justin Verlander going anywhere else. It wouldn't make any sense. The guy has a chance to win 300 games. He's like 54 away from 300. He's going to pitch two more years. I would much rather him pitch in an Astros uniform the next two years than go somewhere else. And yes, I would pay him. I, I would pay him. I, I don't know how much. But I would give him a little bit more than the 25, and I guarantee you Jim Crane's already talking about it. But Jim Crane thanked the fans. Jeremy Pena thanked the fans. He held up the big symbol. Um, you know, thank you, Ryan Stanick's wife, uh, Miss Stanick. She helped me pick my uniform today, my uniform combo, the hat. I know I asked a lot of people to vote on Twitter, and she's like, you definitely need to go with that because – F is for Framber, and that hat fits. I was wearing my Jordan Alvarez alternate jersey. That's Framber's favorite. But, yeah, definitely, I think, a two-year deal. Brennan Bennett's asking, do we extend Mancini? I don't know, man. I, I, I just I don't know about his defense overall over a course of the season. I think Mancini would be a better player um, if uh, – I think he would be a better player if he was here long term or over over a season. He would be a better bat. I think coming in late in the season for whatever reason he couldn't figure it out. Um, someone's asking me. I think Mr. Cronus said, "Is Ryan Stanick a free agent?" I, I'm going to have to look up his contract status. Um, there's a there's a great um, excuse me. There's a great website called SpotRack that you can look up players. <coughs> Excuse me. You can look up players and what their status is on um, on their contract and how long they have a contract for. And I'm going to pull that up right now. Let's see. His contract. Uh, he's an unrestricted free agent in 2024. No. So he hasn't. He has an estimated... He's estimated luxury tax salary is four million for next year. So he signed next year, arbitration three, and then unrestricted free agent at the age of 32 in 2024. So we have Stanick. I think Vasquez, why wouldn't you bring him back? I mean, he's probably not that expensive. Um, he'll help you bridge the gap if Corey Lee's gonna be your guy. Um, why not bring him back? I'm sorry, move Maldi to a coaching position. <laughs> But maldi has got the vested option. I think he took it. He's going to be here next year. Dusty. Dusty definitely comes back. I don't see any way that he doesn't come back. And another big question. What about James Click? Like, where is, where is James Click going to go? I mean, why would you get rid of James Click? I know some people don't like him, but what did he do wrong? I mean... We won a World Series title with him at the GM. But Click, who else are you going to get? Anyone you get is probably going to be a downgrade or with less experience. Ride that bull until it until it dies. I'm telling you. <clears throat> yes, Vicky, I, I believe that too. Hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. You know, walking back from Minute Maid Park to my truck. Hold on. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of... I am overwhelmed with... I guess I'm dehydrated from this night. Uh, people were peeling out. It looked like... It looked like, a, it looked like freaking Fast and Furious out there. Dudes were like... Hanging on the light poles. Uh, they were setting off fireworks. People were scratching, squealing their tires, burning rubber. It smelled terrible. And you can smell, there was all kinds of smoke downtown, let me just tell you. <clears throat> and it didn't smell like anything other than skunks down there. Ugh, it was terrible. But man, the Phillies fans, you know, 
They walked out the stadium. They had their heads hanging. Good for Astros fans. They didn't rub it in their face. They didn't. They didn't go, you know, crazy on them. They were respectful, and so I tipped my hat to you guys. I got a little ruckus with some guys tonight. We were kind of going back and forth at each other, but it's all in good fun. It's all baseball. But I'm just going to wrap it up here. Um, this was a great night. Okay. Oh, I'm sure they wore during the game. Yeah, like when they hit that one nothing home run, they were like acting like like they won the World Series. But with that being said, this team is going to be intact. This team is going to have plenty of players back. Your question marks, Mancini Vasquez. Then you have Brantley. Yuli Gurriel's probably going to retire. I don't know. Um, he's a free agent. I think Montero might be, but I'm not even sure. I'm not going to get into the who is and who isn't. But I'm telling you, now actually it says arbitration three. So, Thomas, I just looked it up. Go to spotrack.com and check that out. This is the golden age. This is the golden era. <clears throat> and as I send you away with one more look at myself and H-Town Wheelhouse Jr., celebrating the final out of the World Series. Y'all have a good night and go Strohs. And we got a lot to talk about in the offseason. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all have a good night. And from the bottom of my heart, I love every one of y'all. Bye.